Hi guys, welcome to the variation in phenotype. So we will be looking at the variation due to genetic factors and variation due to environmental factors. So um, what is meant by term phenotype? It's obviously important for this topic because we're looking at the variation in the phenotype. So make sure you actually include two aspects in here. So aspects to include is genetics and environment. So how you worded them? It's an expression of genetic uh, constitution or genetic or genotype due to expression of the environment. Okay, so make sure you include those two keywords in your uh, answers. So in terms of the variation in phenotype, what we've mentioned, it's due to the genetic and environmental factors. So you should remember from year one, genetic factors that will lead to the variation. So the organism then can contain different alleles of the same, of those specific genes. So the genetic variation are the results of mutation, meiosis and random fertilization. So sexually reproducing organisms, they increase the variation by those three methods. So let's have a look in more detail on the mutation. So mutation is the change to genes and chromosomes due to the change to the sequence of DNA bases, DNA nucleotides. And they might or might not be passed to the next generation. And it's obviously the main source of the variation. So this only it's going to be, be passed to the next generation if mutation takes place in the gametes. Right? So only in the gametes will be passed on. And obviously, if you're looking at the DNA, DNA has all uh, has exons and introns. So if the mutation takes place in the exons, which is a coding sequence, the mutation will be passed on. But if in the introns, it's not going to be passed on because they're going to be spliced out. So meiosis then, obviously, it's the, it's the nuclear division where at the end we are going to get four genetically different daughter cells. So the combinations of the alleles uh, will arise as the process of the crossing over. Okay and the process of the independent assortment. So if you don't remember those processes, have a look at the uh, video on meiosis. But to quickly recap, crossing over is the process where the uh, chromatids of the homologous pairs of the chromosomes will exchange their parts. As the uh, effect of this, you are going to achieve a new combination of the alleles. This takes place in the prophase one of meiosis one. Independent assortment, then, it's the, uh, there are the options how the chromosomes ha can line uh, up in the middle of the cell, in the equator of the cell, in the metaphase. So in the metaphase, we could have a combination of the homologous chromosomes, so the paternal and maternal could align in different combinations. That will lead, again, to the new combinations of the alleles. Finally, we've got the random fertilization. So it's the random process of the fusion of the gametes. Gametes, remember, are haploid. Uh, every time you see single lower N, that shows you that it's only a haploid cell, so it's a gamete. Once they join together, they're going to produce zygote, which is diploid, which stands for 2N. Okay? And variation, uh, obviously, due to genetic factors, could be seen in many ways. So, it could be, for example, the the uh, the blood groups in our uh, in uh, in uh, humans. Okay, so this shows you the uh, the percentage of the UK population of blood groups, which could be A, B, A, B, and O. Okay, so that's the variation. That's uh, uh, around uh, the highest percentage of the UK population has blood group O, okay, the lowest AB. Right, so also the variation could be done due to the environmental factors, and that will affect uh, the organism's genes uh, expression. So genes set limits, but environment determines whether uh, when uh, the, uh, within those limits organisms can survive. So the examples here that we will be looking at could be climate, uh, could be soil, could be pH, 
could be food sources as well. So in terms of the variation due to environmental factors, the best example is the human height and mass. The fact that the height and mass are affected by many genes, which stands for polygenes, uh, it's one of the things, but the other thing that you are aware of, it's obviously, for example, a diet. Okay, so uh, that depends of that influences the expressions of those genes as well. Right, so the variation, if you summarize everything here, the combination of both genetic and in, uh, environmental influences will affect the phenotype. And some characteristics of um, organisms grade onto one another, forming a continuum. Right, so let's have a look at the uh, questions. So we've got here the graph that shows the variation in the length of uh, 86 at, uh, Atlantic salmon. We've got the number of the salmon here, we've got the length over there, and we've got two different groups, R and S. So what we can uh, see here, okay, that the num number of salmon here in group R is higher, okay, and we need to give two possible causes uh, of this variation that result from meiosis. So from everything what we were talking about, now you need to list two things that refers only to meiosis, which was the crossing over and which was the independent assortment. So you need to select really carefully all of the aspects that we've mentioned about in this video to produce your final answers. Another question here, when comparing variation in size between two groups of organisms, it is often considered more useful to compare standard deviation than range. So what is the standard deviation, in other words, and what is range? So standard deviation is the spread of data around the mean, which we need to then uh, obviously be able to uh, include in the answer. But range influences by single outline. So for example here, obviously, what's the range? The difference between the highest and the lowest. The standard deviations, it's a spread about the mean. Or what else you could say, standard deviation will allow uh, you to use it for the statistical use. Because remember, if they overlap, there is no significant uh, difference. If they don't overlap, there is a significant difference. Okay? So, another question, so we've got the individuals in a population, so phenotypic variation, and give two types of a factor that cause this variation. So, We've done it today. We've got the genetic and environmental factors. What is uh, allopatric speciation? I shouldn't really put that question in here, but uh, let's recap on this. Allopatric speciation is the formation of new species from different populations in different areas, so from isolated populations. Right. And here we've got the last question. So you've got two similar species of birds, A and B fed on slightly different site insect and slightly different temperature, right? And we've got this diagram here. So first thing, we need to understand the diagram. So this is how the temperature increases. So the species A are uh, uh, better adapt and tolerate lower temperature, Why the species B uh, do that for the higher temperature. Then we've got the size of food. So that are food, we're talking here about the insects, okay? And again, that increases this way. So species A are going to eat small uh, food, so small insects. Okay, that's increasing, so bigger insects. And the questions we've got here is to uh, number the boxes described in the conditions which represents the niche of species A. So what did we say? Species A, they are they like low temperatures and low and, and small insects. So that the niche that we've got for them is niche one. And now we've got the niche of species for B. So that was for A. What did we say about species B? Species B like big uh, insects and high temperatures. So the niche for those will be definitely niche B. Renish free, sorry. And then we've got the insects too small for species B 
and temperatures to 